Okay, this is a Fusion 360 example um, to try and draw a part that looks something like this one in the bottom right. Well, this this one I'm showing in general, um, but I guess the clearest view of it is here in the bottom right corner. Um, it's, we've, it's called a 30 degree adapter. Basically, I guess something fits onto this face here and something fits onto the bottom face underneath here. And then those two surfaces would be at 30 degrees to each other. Um, and I think we got the original part from a previous tutorial, but I don't have a copy of that. So um, thanks to wherever that came from. Um, OK, let's think about how to start modeling it in Fusion. The first thing that I want to do is just to actually look at it and think about what it's made up of in terms of kind of primitive uh, bits. If I was making it out of um, lumps of clay, how would I start? And I guess um, here there's this rectangular, sort of rectangular plate on the bottom. There's this sort of circular disc on the top. And there is this um, tube which connects them, a hollow tube connecting the two of those. So that's the kind of setup that I'm going to try and build first. A rectangular plate, um, a circular disc, and then a tube that connects them both. So I'll move this out of the way and here's my fusion setup. Um, and I'll just start by trying to create that rectangular plate. That's kind of, I mean, if we look at it, that's kind of the base of the object anyway. So it's not a bad place to start building from. I'm sure you could model this by starting with the circular plate and working through the other way. You can try that if you want to. Um, so I will start a sketch um, and I'll take um, I'll take that plane there. It doesn't really matter which plane you choose, of course. Everything will end up um, a three-dimensional shape anyway. Um, so I've chosen that particular plane to start with. Um, and then what I want to do, you've got these options for the different kinds of rectangle you could draw. Well, I guess the um, the object here if I center everything on the middle of this bottom rectangle, that'll work quite well as a kind of orientation for it. So what I'll do is I will say, um, I'll choose a center rectangle, make this central point here um, the, the center of everything that I'm working off. And then um, I can see on my diagram that that bottom rectangle, it looks pretty square to me. I don't have every dimension in on that. Um, uh, sort of drawing I showed you earlier, but I'm going to say uh, that is 100 by 100. And just to be clear, what I've done there is I used the tab button to move between those two uh, at the moment. Uh, well, if I move the mouse, I resize the rectangle, but if I type in 100 on my keyboard, you can see I'm just pressing tab and I can change either of those two dimensions. And then it's return once um to complete the shape um and if i say stop sketch i can go back and think about this in three dimensions again and then with the three dimensional shape i can extrude it and these should all be things that you remember from previous um 3d modeling work that we take a 2d sketch and then somehow turn it into a 3d volume a 3d body um and an extrude is probably the simplest version of that. Um, and the height of this bit here, well, I happen to know it's 15. So I'm going to put it in as 15. Um, again, you could approximate that off the diagram. It's not actually marked on the diagram, but that's fine. So we've got our starting point. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to do is to put in some fillets. Uh, and the fillets just make it um, a kind of rounded rectangle. Um, again, just in case you're not clear, when I'm moving everything around like this, I'm holding down the shift key and my middle mouse button. Um, the middle mouse button is also the scroll wheel, so it's a bit weird. If I just use the middle mouse button held down on its own, I can kind of move around in the plane. Um, and if I use shift and the middle mouse button, I rotate around like this. 
So that's definitely worth spending some time practicing. Anyway, we've got those four um, corners there now selected. That's what you need to do. Um, and I'm going to make them 14 millimeter radiuses, one four. Um, again, it doesn't really matter if you have a slightly different number, but um, 14 is good here. And we've got our base plate. Um, just coming back and looking at where we're headed. Obviously, um, there are these details. There are some more um, fillets, or maybe they're chamfers. We'll come and look at those later. There are some holes. Um, I put my initials on here. Um, we'll do all of the detailed stuff later. It's a really good idea when you're working in 3D modeling software to try and start with the big picture and then do the kind of finessing and the, the detailed sculpting later on. So the next thing that I want to do is try and put this top disc in place. I could um, do the tube next as well. You, you could make arguments either way. And again, that's an important general thing to have in mind with um, 3D modeling software. There's never just one way to do things. But I'm going to try and put this top disc in place. And to do that, I'm just going to look at this um, image here. What I've got in the the relative position of the top disc compared to the bottom plate is I've got 30 degrees of straight tube and then a kind of bendy bit here and then a nut sorry 30 millimeters of straight tube that's going to confuse things more if I uh, get my units wrong 30 millimeters of straight tube this bendy bit and then another 30 millimeters of straight tube and the whole thing needs to end up at an angle of 30 degrees um, between the the disc and the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, start by drawing a center line, uh, sketching a center line that goes up 30, bends around 30 degrees, and then goes straight for another 30 millimeters. And that should kind of put us in a position to draw this um, this top disc. So let's try and do that. If I say sketch, and I'm going to sketch now on this plane here. Um, just one thing that can be useful over on my sketch palette on the right hand side, I've got this option to slice um, and what that does is take away so that I'm looking, uh, it might be easiest actually if I just show you it like this, slicing does that. So sometimes you want to be looking directly at the plane you're sketching on and sometimes you want to preserve other things which are in front of that plane and to kind of alternate between those two states you choose this slice option. So that's a thing you could do if you wanted to. Um, let's though make a line and we said it needs to go up directly up 30 um, and I hit return. Then I'm just going to put in a tangent arc. Uh, tangent arc means that um, where this arc meets that line it'll be tangent so in this case it'll be a vertical line. Um, and that's fine. I, I'll come back and think about some details on that later. But now I'm going to put in another line and that line. One of the things that I'm trying to do here is not to, if you see, there are all kinds of things it's trying to make me snap to. And if I do those, then I'll have to undo them later. So I'm going to try and find somewhere where it's not really snapping to anything. If I click there, that works OK. Um, just looking again at the uh, PDF, I need this line to be um, a tangent from this straight section onto the curve so that it all curves smoothly and then from the curve onto there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just make a tangent constraint. You can see here I've got a whole load of constraints that I could add in and as we go through um, using Fusion 360, you'll you'll use all of these in time. For the time being, what I want to do is make this line here tangent to that line there. And that's worked out pretty nicely. Um, you might find, depending on exactly where you put things, when you make them tangent, something jumps around. That's OK, too. Um, it'll all be fixable by putting in more and more dimensions. At the moment, I can still move things around. There's quite a lot of flexibility in exactly how we join everything up. Um, so we're going to put in some dimensions to take away that flexibility. So um, I like to get the dimension just from going to sketch, sketch dimension. There are shortcuts you can use as well if you want. Um, and then I said that this line here 
needs to be also 30 millimeters. And then there was one more thing that we agreed, which is that this line and this line end up being at 30 degrees to each other, like so. Um, so that's kind of the sketch I wanted at this stage. And uh, let me just see, I'm a bit worried it's still blue, so it seems like things can still move around. Ah. Uh, Um, that's not quite what I was expecting to happen. So you can see, um, like I say, there's, there's one more thing that's still able to move here. And if you look at when I move it, um, the, the center of this arc is still free to move. So we need to define the radius of this arc. Um, so I will also add that in and that is um, try and get it right. Uh, that's 100. And with that, you may have noticed that things that were coloured blue are now uh, black, and that means that everything is pretty well fixed in place. If I click on this and try and move it around, it doesn't quite work. Um, so now we've got everything locked in place and I'm happy with that sketch and I'm going to stop that. Um, and now we need to start the sketch, which eventually th this point here is going to form a point at the top of our disk. It's kind of the center there. So now we form a sketch that starts us off making that circular disk. Um, what I'm going to do for that is start a new sketch, do it on the same plane as before. Um, and there's one thing that I'm going to do which is important here, which is to project some geometry. That's really when I've got an old sketch that I'm using. So in, that, in this case, th these three lines here, I stopped that sketch and I started a new one. But I still want to use this line here as a kind of reference for all of what I'm doing. Um, so I need to choose to project that. And I've also chosen to make it construction geometry, um, which means it's only used for referencing other things to it's not going to be um, forming a final part of the sketch that I turn into a 3D object. With all of that in mind, it, it, the good news is I've, I've now got this line that I need and I can reference things to it in my um, current operation. So I'm going to turn off the construction mode. And now what, we, what we're going to do in the long run, again, just thinking about the bigger picture here, um, to make a disk, one of the easiest ways to do it is to make a rectangle, uh, this shape I'm outlining here, and then to revolve that rectangle uh, through 360 degrees and that will make a disk. So that's roughly what we're going to do. Um, that rectangle, well the disk diameter needs to be 110 so its radius is 55 and that's the dimension of the rectangle. And the height um, isn't marked on here but I'm going to make that 10. Okay, um, so we are sketching and this time a two-point rectangle is tricky because it's not quite going to be aligned with the original coordinate system, um, it, it doesn't extend in the x and y directions in the way this does. So we need a three-point rectangle. And the three-point rectangle, I click once, uh, I click, I'm going to make this side 10, and click there. Um, you might want to play around just to make sure you're clicking in the right places. The important things are that in the end it should have diamet it should be a rectangle which is um, 10 millimeters high, 55 millimeters wide, and is aligned with this uh, line that you drew in the previous sketch. And that's going to mean everything ends up in the right place. Um, OK, and now what I want to do is revolve that so that I've got the um, 
the three-dimensional shape that I wanted and then I'm in a reasonable position. So uh, create a revolve. You'll see this revolve panel over on the right hand side that I've got. First of all it wants me to select a profile. That's kind of the uh, sketch that it wants me to revolve. Then an axis, so that's where am I revolving it around, and I'll go there. And as soon as I can do that, as I do that, you can see um, that we've basically got what we wanted. I could change some details about um, making it not go all the way around. Like if I made this 270 degrees, you see it would only uh, revolve around 270. But that's not what we want here. We want a, a complete disk, uh, like so. So that's quite good. Um, now we've got two things in place that we wanted um, and we're sort of building up the correct um, set of um, parts of this object that are all going to fit together. Next, well the next thing to do is this tube um, which is now I hope you can see that the, the tube in the middle is centered on this line that we've already sketched. So we've already got some quite useful information here ready to go. Um, and uh, the inside diameter of the tube is 40 and the outside diameter is 56. I'm going to do this in two parts. First of all I'm going to add material with a 56 millimeter diameter and then I'm going to cut material with a 40 millimeter diameter. So uh, as with everything it starts with a sketch. I'm just going to flip this over so I'm sure I'm drawing on the bottom and sketch like so. Um, and we'll do a circle, sorry, circle, center point circle, there's our center and we said it needs to be 56 millimeters diameter. Uh, hit return twice and I'm there. And now I've got everything that I need to perform a sweep. So a sweep will take this circular shape at the bottom and kind of drag it out along this line here to give us the, the start of the tube that we're trying to make. So I go create, sweep. Again, look across here at what you're being asked for by the software. First of all, it says what profile. Uh, that's the, the sketch that it wants to, to draw out. And then the path, well that's where does it pull that sketch along. So something like that. Um, distance, I want to go all the way along the path, so that's 1.00. You could add in things like a taper and a twist. Um, that's going to make it more complicated, but you should feel you know, encouraged to play around with that. The thing that's important here is I can either take material away or I can add material or I can do these more complicated cut and intersect tools. I'm just going to add material and I'm going to hit OK. So now we've really got, you know, the basis of what we wanted. This is this is all starting to come together. Next, I'll do another sketch. Um, again on this face here and I'm going to do the inner circle. I'll do this all quite quickly. Um, it's got a diameter of four, sorry, 40. That's fine and I can stop that sketch. Now there's just one thing that's worth paying attention to here. You can, I think you can imagine what I'm going to do is take uh, this circle that I've just drawn, extrude it along the same line as before and cut material away so that we've got a hollow tube down the middle. But I've lost that line that we drew before. So what I can do is go back here to the um, the sketches that I've already done somewhere and I can try and find that one. If I turn on sketch 2 then all of a sudden we can see the, the path that we want to use again. Um, so that's useful and I can go back and again sweep, um, look at what's being requested in the sweep menu over on the right hand side. The profile is the sketch that gets dragged, the path is the route it gets dragged along um, and in this case I do want to cut material, I want to get rid of this and make it hollow so I can click OK. And now you can see if you look from the right direction, we've got a hollow down the middle of our part. Um, 
So we've got to the stage now, I would say, where this is the right basic shape. Um, and now we just need to add in some details. So let's look at some details. Um, I'll start with these four holes on the corners of the part. Um, there's one hidden round the back that you can't see. It's this one here, but you know, there, there are four symmetric holes and they're in a kind of pattern. So we might take advantage of that uh, to get them in the right place. Um, what I'll do first is say create a hole and again look at this menu over here to see what kinds of things you're being asked for. It says face sketch points. That basically means where are we putting this hole and I put it on this face here. Um, if I just, I, it's going to be clearer if I just shrink the hole a bit so we can see what's going on and if I move the center so I can move this around and one of the things you can see is uh, there's the, if you if you look here once I start moving it around again there's a certain kind of point we can lock it to it'll snap to that point see it snap and that point uh, you can see four of them one two three and four uh, those points are um, aligned with the four filleted corners in a way so I am going to snap it on there that's good and then for the um, extent I'm just going to say go through everything uh, which leaves me so this drop down here I could specify a distance I could say drill down um, 20 millimeters or 2 millimeters or something I could choose 2 and then a surface that I wanted it to stop at but here I'm not worried about how far to cut so I'm just going to say through all um, you can choose the hole type the tap type and so on um, and then the last thing that we need to choose is the diameter of the hole um, on that drawing uh, the PDF I had it's 10.2 that's a, a, a I'm just going to put in a 10 millimeter hole and I think once I thread it I'll end up with a certain um, internal and external size which will match up with M10. So we'll take a look at that in a second but I'm going to use a 10 millimeter hole and then what I can also do is to add in a thread on the inside of that and I'm just going to take the defaults that give me a fairly standard ISO M10 thread again if you wanted to you could change all kinds of things here to get very specific threads but I'm just going to hit OK. So that's good we've now got um, that part that hole uh, drilled and we'd like to repeat the same thing in four places. Um, to do that we're going to use a pattern now you might think that we want a rectangular pattern let's just see how we get on with a rectangular pattern because um, it, it's the slightly trickier of the two kinds of pattern. Objects, so that's what do we want to repeat? It's this hole here. Directions, so now we want to find a line that go, we want the two, well, let's say we want to repeat the object at this point. Then we need to find something that goes in the direction from here along to there. And if I choose this line here, that's pointing in the right direction. And now what I can do is to say OK and space them out at, um, if I say 50 millimeters, you can see that there'll be one every 50 millimeters. Um, actually, I think in this case, we want one every 72 millimeters. That'll get it in the right place. And I'm just going to have um, two of them. The next thing that I can do is to choose another direction, I hope. Um, uh, so and if I do that, no, that's not doing what I wanted. Um, OK, well, let's try two. Um, and we'll, we'll start trying to set this up and see how it goes and I'll make this 72 millimeters as well. Now you can see, um, so it, I think what it was doing was automatically making my two directions perpendicular to each other. Those holes are actually going to be in the right place. Um, <laughs> you, you'll have noticed that when I was doing that 
I was kind of using a bit of trial and error. Um, I happen to know the whole thing is 100 millimeters. These radii are 14. Therefore, the distance between here and here is 100 minus 2 times 14, which is 72. I mean, you can calculate all these things and, and do have a think about where they've come from. Um, and you can do all kinds of useful things with a rectangular pattern. But I'm going to cancel that. And instead, uh, well, I thought I was going to, yeah, I'm going to cancel that. And instead, what I'm going to do, um, rather than just going with that rectangular pattern, I'm going to choose a circular pattern. And now things get a bit easier. Um, the object is still the same thing. It's the hole that we cut. The axis, all I need to do here is um, note that that very first point I started from the origin down here, that is kind of the central axis of everything I'm doing. And I can pick anything that's symmetric around that. So I can pick this curve here. And if I choose to have four um, holes or four, repeat, four repetitions within the pattern, it'll actually then the symmetry of the situation will put one on each corner of this rectangle. And when I click OK, you can now see I've got those holes exactly where I wanted them. Um, while we're in the mood to do holes, let's go on and do uh, the holes that are in the top disk. Uh, so for that, I'm going to start by sketching on the top disk. Um, I'm going to do this thing again of uh, projecting or including some construction geometry. And I'm just going to include uh, this and this, um, the two circles that make up the, the shape of the disk, just because it might be useful. And I can click OK. We projected everything we want. Um, our holes need to be halfway between those two circles, and they're kind of on another circle. So I'm going to draw that one. And I'm also going to make it a construction circle because we just want to place holes on it. We don't want to um, to have it, you know, we're not going to extrude it or anything like that. And if you calculate, you'll find this inner diameter is 40. The outer diameter is 110 and halfway between those is 75 millimeters. So now I've got a circle where I want it and I want to pick out uh, again, different ways to do this. I want to pick out kind of with on that circle something north, east, south and west of the center. Um, and so what I'm going to do is keep on using construction geometry and I'll do a line that goes vertically. Uh, that's good. I'll do a line that goes horizontally right. Not sure I got that one right, so I'm just going to delete it and do it again. Make sure it's a horizontal line. I'm getting this thing that says zero degrees, and you can actually see maybe in light blue there there is a a vertical con sorry a horizontal constraint visible. Uh, this um, if I just escape this thing here tells me that that line is constrained to be vertical. This thing here tells me that that line is constrained to be horizontal. And if I didn't want that, I could click on this and delete it. And then this line is no longer constrained to be uh, horizontal. And if I do want it to be so, then I can uh, use the, the tools, the constraint tools over in the sketch palette and get it back. So you can play around with all of that. But I want to keep going here because I want to identify all four of these um, points we're going to use. And there's one last line to draw, which is over here, like so. And then finally, um, I can add in some points. So point one, point two, point three, and point four. And I'm going to stop that sketch. Now, the only things there that aren't construction geometry are these four points. And if I say create a hole, um, and I make it a uh, 10 millimeter diameter hole. Sorry, that's uh, 10 millimeters in diameter. And I click that I want them at four different points. Um, 
there's a funny thing here so this is the setup that I want in the end there's a funny thing here where if I say go through all it just keeps on drilling forever and it'll drill these holes in my base plate that I don't want so through all isn't going to work in this context but if I say okay we'll go to and then I need to choose a surface that it goes as far as and I click on this bottom surface then we get holes that just go from the top surface of the disk to the bottom surface of the disk so that's a way to make that work if it's not working for you um, and that looks pretty good and the next thing that I suppose I want to do is just to put in the threads on each of those um, it wouldn't let me it won't let me select more than one so holding down control is often a useful way to uh, select multiple items so I'm holding down the control key and now I can select all four and give them this same M10 thread just the standard default one I'm offered um, you know if you were designing and you wanted a different thread you can look around on that thread menu until you've got something that matches exactly what your need is um, so this looks pretty good now we're, we're coming together nicely one thing I've just noticed is that this uh, sketch the send the, the line we used um, to sweep along is still visible it doesn't matter um, it's not going to change anything but it's just a bit clunky when everything else that we're looking at is part of the 3d body so I'm just going to turn off this light here and now we can only see the bodies or the, the single body that we've created we can't see any of the sketches that went into it and if I want to see those sketches I turn the lights back on so that's how that works uh, okay let's go back and take another look at our what we were aiming for um, let's think chamfers there are six millimeter chamfers here on this kind of uh, intersection which is kind of here and on this one which is underneath the disk so I'll start by doing that uh, create oh sorry modify uh, and they're not chamfers they're fillets the difference is you can kind of see from the diagram a fillet is round and a chamfer is straight we'll do a chamfer in a minute to look at that as well and I choose the edges that I want to use to, to shape and I need to say that I want those to be six millimeters so I think you can see the uh, the outcome from that and um, there are also there are uh, smaller chamfers two millimeter chamfers on some of the corners that might turn out to be sharp corners sorry two millimeter fillets on some of the corners that might turn out to be sharp corners here uh, here here and here I'll make all of those two so that's looking nice uh, there are some chamfers there's a chamfer here on the inside which is a two millimeter chamfer and there's this more complicated one at the bottom that we'll come back to so uh, chamfer uh, we choose the edge that we want to chamfer and then um, I can make the distance two millimeters and again you can do that with this dialog box or with the the chamfer dialog box as with many pieces of drawing software there's more than one way to do pretty much every task so that chamfer now is clear what what we've got from that um, this one on the bottom was a funny one if we say modify chamfer and I choose the the edge that we want instead of being equal distance um, you can see it's it's sort of um, a non 45 degree angle the chamfer is actually two millimeters wide and four millimeters high so what I'm going to do is instead of choosing chamfer type equal distance I'll go with two distances and I'll make the first one two and the second one four and that does that gives me the shape I wanted it's probably worth checking just to make sure you've got it the right way around in some other contexts of course we'd want four and then two um, but that looks fine uh, that's all pretty pleasing um, let's just take a look I think I've now covered everything that makes up uh, this 30 degree adapter and there's just one detail left to think about which is I put my initials on the edge of it um, I like to do that and we'd like to encourage you to do that because if I'm putting things into a portfolio it's clear 
you know, it's just a way of identifying um, what you've done. So if you can, we'd like you to finish and finish pretty much every model you make by sketching, um, choose a face to sketch on, and then we're going to say, okay, add some text. Um, the the marker here is the bottom left corner of the text. So I'll put it about there. Um, and my text just is my initials. You can always, of course, change your font, play around a bit. Uh, I quite like Gil Sands, um, so I'll go with that. Um, and then I'll just move this until it feels reasonably central. Doesn't matter too much. And I'll say OK. You could change the size of that font as well. You know, you can, you know how text works. You can. Um, edit that and then the last thing I'm going to extrude um, I'll go about minus two millimeters or something like that cutting and if I hit OK uh, you'll see it's just it's sort of embossed slightly in the edge of the part there um, but that'll show up when I want to make a nice um, image of what I've done. And then you should uh, save your work. I'm afraid for some reason my computer isn't letting my Fusion 360 go online, so although I can save it uh, here, um, I uh, can't add it to my online catalogue of work. Um, I'll try and get that fixed. Um, but you should save a copy of this and make sure you've got a good copy and later on we'll talk a bit about rendering and making a really nice image of it and everything else um, but that is a kind of reminder of how to do part modeling and um, that's that uh, bracket complete one more thing you could do if you wanted is to assign a material uh, to do that you choose the body you want to work with right click and then choose physical material um, and you can make it out of anything you like uh, you know you can pretend it's made out of water um, but the idea with this which isn't a terribly important one was that it was made out of cast iron um, and I'll choose just the standard cast iron I pick it up and drag it over onto the body um, just to show you if I pick up gold and drag it over then I get something that sort of looks like it's made out of gold um, so it's you know have a play around to see what you end up um, enjoying but if you are trying to make an accurate representation of something that exists then you'll want to use the correct material for that thing that already exists um, and that is everything that I want to show on this part so I'll stop there <laughs>